This is the second demonstration of the Lindemann rotary attraction motor. Uh, we have a uh, variac which is connected to the wall and it can produce a uh, variable DC supply through these wires here. That's represented by this box on the drawing. It's, it's plugged into the wall. The plus and the minus come down to uh, a terminal block here and we have an amp meter and a volt meter. The volt meter is connected across the supply. The amp meter is connected uh, in line with the supply as it is shown here in the diagram. The plus and the minus, the red and the black, come through to this uh, terminal block here and are used to power our motor demonstration. The motor is uh, a uh, variation of a series wound motor with a wound rotor and a wound field. And what we have done is we have modified the rotor section. So we've taken all the windings off the rotor and cut the uh, rotor so that it just acts like a bar of iron. And we have left the, uh, uh, the stator windings in place and used them as is. The wires that you see here coming out the top of the test motor are the wires that used to go to the brushes that would have put electricity onto the rotor, which are now abandoned. These other two wires down here go to the field windings, and they are connected as shown. The negative comes in from our supply, our metered supply, and goes to the emitter of a transistor as shown. The collector goes to one side of the coil, and the other side of the coil goes directly to our plus supply. So this is the run uh, mechanism of our system. We simply turn the power on and off at, at correct times so that we can attract this piece of iron, and then when it's in alignment, we shut it off so that it can slide out. Uh, that control mechanism is uh, very also very simple. It consists of two 220 ohm resistors, as shown, creating a little voltage divider bridge, which is connected through a magnetic reed switch, which is this brown box here. We have a wheel on the motor that has two magnets in it, and that is this uh, wheel in front here, the magnets here and here, and this this section that's a black circle with a white spot on it is used so that we can uh, determine its speed using this uh, X-Tech photo tachometer, which we will do during our testing. The output circuit, when we turn the coil off, the electricity can be recovered because the magnetic field collapses. And that secondary circuit is this section here because when this turns off, this cuts off the electricity from the power supply. So the um, electricity which comes back out of the machine comes out through this diode. This diode is a PTC205 uh, from Radio Shack. It's a 1,000 volt, 2.5 amp diode. And that is this component right here. And then our, um, our various loads, we're going to show three different loads in this demonstration. We're going to show how the motor behaves uh, when this energy is just dropped into a short circuit. We're going to show what happens when it runs a light bulb, and we're going to show what happens when it charges a battery. The one thing that's interesting about this is that this is uh, what is called a no-back EMF motor, which means that when you uh, create a mechanical load on the motor, it doesn't draw more electricity demonstrate that as well. But we will show that the electrical loading of the motor changes its characteristics significantly, whereas the mechanical loading changes it very little. Let's start our demonstration. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to run the motor with, a, with the number one load, which is the short circuit load. And all we're doing is we're t when, the, when the field collapses uh, through the diode out here, we're just literally throwing the power away across the short circuit. And here's how the motor runs. You can see that our voltage is approximately, I'm leaving the power setting on our supply the same 
so that the voltage will be as identical as possible. You can see on this meter, which is a 0 to 100 volt scale, that we're pretty close to 20 volts, almost exactly 20 volts. Our current meter here is on the 10 amp scale on, with one half setting, so it's 0 to 5 amps full scale, and it is currently reading one notch past uh, one amp, so it's 1.1 amps. Our motor is turning, speeding up just a little bit, 2960 RPM. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to physically load the motor down. Most of you know that electric motors are such that when you take mechanical energy out of them, uh, they draw more uh, uh, current. And so uh, let's bring the meter in here again to look at the um, uh, current meter while I physically load the motor. And the current stays stable for a very, very, over a very large range. So you can see that this is uh, what we call the no back EMF performance. In other words, when you mechanically take energy out of the motor, it does not draw more electricity. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the short circuit, our little short circuit here, which is just a wire right across the outputs here, and I'm going to replace it with this little light bulb. It's a little 12-volt uh, automobile light bulb. And this will offer the machine a slightly different load impedance so we can see how it behaves differently than what we just saw. So let's start it up again. Okay, so now uh, we're running our second load. This load here, the light bulb. And you can see the light bulb shining away back there. We're not making any claims about uh, specific efficiencies or anything else. I assure you that this test setup is, a, is all under unity, but it demonstrates certain principles which are important to understand if you want to try and build something that does go over unity. And so what we see here is the, uh, again, uh, the voltage is right around 20 volts, and we haven't touched the supply, so it should be producing approximately the same amount of voltage. But now, all of a sudden, we see our amp meter has, has changed dramatically. And it's drawing less than half of what we saw before. It is, it's reading just about 0.4 or 400 milliamps, as opposed to um, 1,100 milliamps. So this is less than half of the total electric draw. You can also see that the motor speed is uh, significantly faster. We're uh, above 3600 RPM, 3619 looks stable, 3624. And we're actually recovering some of the electricity with our light bulb. So what we're seeing is, is that the motor runs faster. You may also be able to tell that the motor runs quieter. It's drawing less than half as much electricity as it did before, running faster and giving us some of the electricity back shown on the light bulb.